What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for week 5 of the Pokemon Premier League. The Eternity City Enders are now going to take on the Pittsburgh Pyroar, which of course are coached by Slyro. If you have not seen the team analysis video that I did, please be aware that it's in the same playlist as this video, so that's available for you to watch if you'd like. And uh, yeah, so looking at the teams here, I was actually pretty relieved overall to see what he brought. I definitely expected Caesar, Mega Blastoise, and Gardevoir, and Tornadus. I didn't expect him to bring Crustle and Kecleon so much, but Crustle definitely makes sense with his ability to hazard stack against my team. Uh, I did decide to bring uh, just basically fully defensive, especially defensive Cofagrigus and um, Florges. Uh, I brought a Focus Punching, Law Punny, a Specs Noivern, uh, a wonderful um, Trick Room, Reuniclus, and of course the very, very bulky Toxic Hook that I ended up bringing. This Toxic Hook is really special. I bred it right before the battle. Um, it has max HP, 148 defense, and. 20 speed and the remainder in special defense. It can live a plus two bullet punch from a life orb Caesar. It can live any hit from Blastoise. It can live up to three hits from Blastoise actually and get HP back from Drain Punch um, to offset the damage. So I was feeling really confident with this matchup. Uh, at the beginning here, I was figuring that he would just start stacking with his Crustle. So I switched right on to Cofagrigus just to kind of mitigate that a little bit. But he switched on to Kecleon and Kecleon actually has knockoff. I put Colberberry on my Cofagrigus hoping that I could take a knockoff from Caesar and then burn him in return. But now I'm going to be able to burn uh, Kecleon, which is okay. Um, clearly he's using physical moves, so I will take that opportunity to burn this thing. Uh, and the, the residual damage is going to be pretty nice. Now as he switches out here, I really should have gone for another Will-O-Wisp. I think my team would have appreciated it overall to get some chip damage on Gardevoir. I was very worried about it being Scarfed, and I did a double switch at the same turn that he did, uh, but I predicted wrong. I thought he might go back out on the Crustal, but he went on to Gardevoir, can't stay in there, and he switches out on that same turn uh, and back into Crustal. Probably he, it turns out that his Crustal did have Rocky Helmet, so he wanted to hit me with some, some residual damage from that. But I really should have stayed in there and Mega Evolved. Granted, it was not worth the risk that he could have been Scarfed, because then he would have outsped uh, my Law Punny and KO'd it with the Hyper Voice. Uh, but that unfortunately gives him the opportunity to set up Stealth Rocks. Moonblast does a pretty much amount of damage. Um, I just went for a Wish right here, thinking, okay, I did calc for him to get up Stealth Rocks and a layer of Spikes. Uh, so I just wanted to stay in here and go for that. He surprises me here with Heal Bell, and that makes me immediately go, oh. It's a supportive Gardevoir, likely max HP with some mixed defenses in there, and that changes the whole ball game. Uh, that means that my Law Punny can outspeed it. Um, that means that uh, my weird Toxic Rogue set might actually not want to hit KO it with a Gunk Shot necessarily because I don't have any attack investment. So that that completely changes things in my opinion. Um, he does get an opportunity to bring in Caesar here as I go for another Wish. Uh, he also healed the burn from his Kecleon, which sucks because now he's going to be able to do whatever damage he wants to with Sucker Punch, Shadow Sneak, or Knock Off. Uh, he does hit me with Bullet Punch here, and at this point my Cofagrigus has just taken too much residual damage from switching. Um, he got a crit with Knock Off earlier. This is just not good enough. So fortunately I do switch it into the Wish, which is why I really wanted to set up this duo. But unfortunately I don't get to burn Mega Blast Wish because I freaking missed the Will-O-Wisp, which is going to be huge later on, and um, I, I miss out on not one, not two, not three, not four, I miss out on, on something like five turns residual damage, which at an eighth of your HP per turn is a lot of burn damage that I missed out on. But anyways though, I find out here that he has Earthquake, which is good to know, he definitely predicted me to switch into Toxicroak there, uh, but even with Earthquake, with the defensive investment that I have to take hits from Caesar. Earthquake is about a 3 hit KO, especially after Drain Punch and Leftovers. Uh, unless he just happens to be Max Attack, which I don't know why you would run a Blast Witch with Max Attack. But anyways though, he goes into Kecleon, probably just to try to knock off something again, I would expect. Uh, I'm not really worried about Kecleon at the same point. It can get enough coverage moves that it can be annoying. So I see this as an opportunity to switch on Law Punny on any weird coverage move he wants to go for. I didn't figure he'd go for a Drain Punch because Forges would resist that. He does go for Iron Tail, which misses, but it doesn't really matter because I did get the Wish and it wouldn't have done that much damage anyway. 
Uh, it changes him into the steel type, which is nice because now I can hit him super effectively. But I would have hit him super effectively if he were normal type anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, as I go for the Mega Evolution, I figure that he would switch into Crustal. And now is a prime time to get up a substitute and go for some focus punches. Uh, at the time, I didn't know that Crustal had the Rocky Helmet. Otherwise, I probably would have gone straight for a focus punch. Um, Crustal with max HP and max defense only takes about 30% from uh, Drain Punch. So I'm basically forced into going for focus punch here. And amazingly, Crustal takes it, which sucks because now I have to take two turns of Rocky Helmet damage. And that means, number one, I don't recover any HP from Drain Punch. And number two, I'm below half HP on Law Punny, which puts me in range of Caesar's Bullet Punch. Now, Law Punny, I did have a little bit of extra bulk. I put enough speed in it just to outspeed Scarf Gardevoir and the rest went into HP. That was a great suggestion by Aqua Clauncher, my co-coach. Uh, but with my HP that low because of taking that extra Rocky Helmet hit, it won't really matter. Um, as he brings in Tornadoes on my Law Punny after I take out the Crustle, he goes for a U-turn, which immediately clues me in that he's probably Scarfed. Um, I don't really know that you will run U-turn on a Tornadus unless you were running Scarf. Maybe a weird supporting set, I don't really know. But I think that he's Scarfed just because Gardevoir isn't Scarfed. And I bring in Kofagrigus here on the Bullet Punch to make him lose the Mummy. I have a good amount of HP, or what I thought was a good amount of HP. He no longer has Technician, so Knockoff is not going to be boosted. And he still manages to take me out because he got a maximum damage roll there. He definitely did not have a very good chance to take me out. I was going for Pain Split to get a lot of that HP back. I would have settled for even burning the Scizor. Granted, based on earlier, I probably would have missed the stupid Will-O-Wisp, but who knows. Uh, I go out into Noivern here, th figuring that I can take any one hit from Scizor. I knew Gardevoir was coming in, so I have to go for Hurricane. I, get I can't go for Draco Meteor until I get rid of Gardevoir. And amazingly, I hit... Hurricane two times in a row to take out Gardevoir. Uh, Noivern has been missing moves the entire league, so I, I don't even consider that. That that was just mind blowing that I managed to hit both of those moves. Um, I stay in here and went for Hurricane again just because I wasn't sure what he would go for. Uh, I get a critical hit on my Hurricane, which actually doesn't end up mattering at all uh, in the long run, uh, especially because I didn't get confusion or anything like that. And I basically force him to switch out into Blastoise if he doesn't want to get uh, set up on or something like that. I think he predicted my switch at this time, and I actually just went for a bulk up. I was running a little bit of speed on Toxicroak to speed creep any type of bulky Blastoise he was running. And this is nice because I get a bulk up before he uses Earthquake, but he gets a critical hit going through my bulk up and going through just all the defensive investment I put in there. And now I'm forced to go for Gunk Shot. And without plus two, I can't KO Blastoise, and so he's able to KO my Toxicroak. And that definitely would have been a three at KO if he hadn't have K uh, critical hit me. Uh, so I was just really kind of miffed about that. Then to just top it all off, why not get another critical hit on Reuniclus and knock it out in one hit when it was easy to take one and then go for Trick Room. Duh. Very frustrating. Let's go into my Noivern here. Go for Draco Meteor. I do hit it, so great you know might as well hit that move uh too bad i don't ko blastoise with it because blastoise is a very bulky pokemon especially when you invest in it like slyro has or it, that it appears that he has in this manner um so we have blastoise barely living we have crustal barely living that means floor just has to come in here and take some unnecessary damage from stealth rock and i have to go for moon blast and it's just this whole thing that's just annoying basically in my opinion because now the battle is over he can go into Caesar. He can bullet punch Florges in the face, and then he can bullet punch my Lopunny in the face, and that is the end of that. So, uh, I don't know. I had a pretty, I had a bad day today, and then top it off with this battle. And I don't. I'm just. I have to do better in this league, because I am not satisfied with how this ended. I planned really, really well for this battle, and I was not at all satisfied with how it ended. So you will be seeing the Eterna City Enders next week coming back with a vengeance for week six of the Pokemon Premier League. I hope you guys enjoyed the battle, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye now.